how many areas? Four. Four. Number one, we call fluency, clear, and coherence. The second one, what is the second one? There is called lexical resource. And the third one, we come up with a grammatical range and accuracy. And the fourth one, we have that is called your pronunciation. Excellent. Look, when you speak for five times, so examiner is not going to give you six or seven. You understand? Yes, sir. Like if you speak for five band, the examiner is going to give you band accordingly. And as I mentioned earlier, there are four different areas. How many areas? Four. four. What if a student, like he is good at grammar, but his vocabulary is weak? So now he will get good band and vocabulary and, and grammar, but less and vocabulary. Okay. If he is good at he, he is good at pronunciation, but his fluency is weak. So what will happen in that time? He will get less score and his fluency then. Am I right? Yes. Look. So these are first of all understand. Uh, understand the the, 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 the the way how you will be graded. For example, you get in grammar, you get six out of nine. Six band out of nine. Okay, total band we have nine. Uh, your vocab you get for example seven, huh? Out of nine. What about pronunciation? You get, for example, six out of nine. And fluency when it comes, you get, suppose, five out of nine. Okay? So now, if we calculate nine multiplied by four, 36. 36 divided by four is equal to nine then. For you speaking, nine then. But now, if we calculate what you have scored, six plus seven, 13. 13 plus six, 19. 19 plus six, five. 24. 24 divided by 4 is equal to, you got 6 band out of 9. This is clear. So, do not think that I am, uh, I, I talk to the examiner, you know, quite fluently and is going to give me band. No. No. You, you may get good band for your fluency, but what about the grammar? Your grammar accuracy. You're not good at grammar. So you will lose your marks in your grammar portion. What if you get less band in grammar, so your overall band, it will be disturbed. You get less overall band, because you, you're going to get overall band, okay? Because examiner is not going to give you like separate band, you will get your band in speaking portion only. So speaking, we are supposed to improve how many areas? Four areas. Number one, grammar. Number two, vocab. Number three, yes, pronunciation and? Yes. Let's talk about it. I do not say that you don't use vocab, you don't use your vocabulary. But what is something like for the nine bed? First of all, let's come up with the, the first one. The first one, we're going to have a look at fluency and coherence, okay? The first one. For seven band, if you, you your target is seven, how many points do you have? One, two, three. These are the three points. One, two, three. For seven band, now if you improve with the eight band, what is that? And for the nine band, what do you will have? Four. Clear? Again, these are the areas. Uh, I will provide you with the band descriptor as well. And you have to achieve the level. Until you don't touch the level for nine band or seven or six band, clear? If you fall in five band, so examiner is going to give you five band only. Not six or seven or eight band, okay? okay. Do you understand? So let's come, for example, our target is seven plus or seven. Let's read it. Number first, able to keep going clear, clear, and really produce long terms without noticeable effort. That's about your fluency. When you keep speaking to the examiner, so you do not take unnecessary pauses. You do not, you try to avoid unnecessary pauses, clear? And examiner, he comes to know, he can speak, you know, quite fluently without any type of efforts. What if he comes to know that the person, he can't speak fluently? He takes passes in between words, clear, he's not fluent. So what will happen? Number first, able to keep going and readily produce long terms. Long terms. For long time on a topic, he can quite easily speak on the same topic. Do you understand? For the seven band, number one. And without noticeable effort. That's for the seven band. What if examiner, uh, uh, and uh, then, uh, uh, like you start, clear? Uh, examiner comes to know he's not that fluent in English, number one. Number two, 
some hesitation. Huh, there could be some hesitation. And even like it's seven band, you, you may have some, some sort of hesitation. Okay, for the seven band. One, number two, there could be some of the repetition, like you repeat yourself, clear, or self-correction, maybe like, for example, if I say, uh, well, uh, I, uh, uh, I play cricket, as a, uh, uh, I play cricket, play, instead of play, I say plays, but I corrected myself. Maybe like even in seven band speaking, number one, you can correct yourself, but not too much, too much, okay? Number one, number two, often, mm, Mid sentence and indicate problems with accessing appropriate language. Like you do not access to the appropriate language. For example, if I say Salwa called us for the dinner and she gave us delicious food. Now we don't use the word give, we use the word oh, serve. She served us delicious food. We do not say clear? Yeah, there could be that it is like repetition. Repetition, clear, it occurs, but not too much. Not too much. What if I say, she served a delicious food, I can use twice even. But trying to avoid repetition over there. You can say, well, the food she served us, I have never eaten such a, such a tasty food in my life. So now once I have used delicious, but for the second time, I change the word, the, 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 an adjective to delicious, from delicious to tasty. Excellent. Clear? That's what like, and then however, these will not affect coherence. And then we, when we come up, flexible use of spoken, flexible use of spoken discourse. <coughs> Excellent. Clear discourse markers, linkers. Linkers you use, but spoken one, not written one. Most of the time, students, they cannot differentiate between written discourse markers and the spoken one. Like for example, we say, but. Is spoken, but we try to avoid however. We do not say in contrast. In spoken, we don't say in contrast because that is a discourse marker for the written one, for the writing. We say in contrast, but in spoken, we say but. Clear? We say, on the other hand, if I clear, uh, if I talk about the other side, clear? We can say other side other side of the picture but we cannot say like you know however in contrast in those those discourse markers okay so we can say connectives and cohesive features you this is very important to use clear in your spoken the way you use in your written clear there you are supposed to use some of the linkers to link your ideas properly you will try to link your ideas so how many areas do we have now for that. Let's compare with the six band, okay? Let's compare that with the six band. For the six, again said. Mm. Able to keep going and demonstrates a willingness to produce long terms. Like here he faced a big problem, player. Coherence may be lost at times as a result of hesitation. Player, he's not coherent. And repetition and self-correction use range of spoken discourse markers, connectives, and cohesive features, though not always appropriately. For the second, six band, they use them, but not appropriate one. But for the seven, they use, but appropriate one. Now, if we have a look at eight band, okay? Let's take this one. For eight band, number one, fluent with only uh, very occasional repetition or self-correction, like rarely, clear? Number one. Number two, hesitation may occasionally be used to find words or grammar only. Not about like they, 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 they don't lose their fluency, they're, it doesn't mean they're not fluent, but if they a bit get stuck, so they try to find a word, clear? What word I can use for that? And what most will be con content, Related. They talk about the content related. And then topic development is coherent, appropriate, and relevant. Clear? That's how, like, when we start now practicing, I will let you know what are the things you need to improve. The first one. The second, if you come up with the second portion, what we have in the second? That's about your lexical resource, about your vocab. For the seven band, let's take, let's have a look at seven band, clear? Because most of us, our target is getting seven. Number one, 
resource, clear resource, a uh, flexibly used to discuss a variety of topics. Uh, what does it mean? It means that the vocabulary you want to use, clear, you have sufficient vocabulary related to a specific topic. What if I want to talk about the topic is about friendship? So for friendship, I need different vocabulary. What if I talk about, suppose, weather? So for the weather, I need different vocab. So can you properly develop your vocab? Do you have a wide range of vocab? Wide range of vocabulary to discuss a specific topic. Can I add like some of the words from, from the weather and, my, and, 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 and that of another topic? Like if I talk about friendship? No. Clear? Because for friendship, we use different vocab. There could be different verbs, nouns, adjectives. Fine. But for that of your, uh, the second one, weather, we have different one. So make sure that you are quite, you have a wide range of vocab. Some ability to use less common and idiomatic items. And an awareness of style and collocation. Clear? It's an important word. Collocations. Like, you know how to use like a word made of three, four words, two words, more than one word. Like, for example, if I say, uh, well, you should not waste your time. So I use time only. No, that's not, you, it's a single word. What if I say, do not waste your precious time. Do not waste your precious time. So now which one is better, precious time or only time? Yes, you have to know about it. Now once I start giving you the practices, clearly you will come to know what are the things, what are the areas I need to focus on. Okay, and then we come up with a, is evident, though an appropriate, and say, okay, after still they will have some of the issues, but seven, clear, getting out seven band and speaking is not that difficult for anyone. It's quite easy to get seven, seven plus in speaking. And effective use of paraphrasing is required. Like you do rephrase yourself. You try to use different synonyms. You don't use exactly the same word again and again. You try to bring some changes in your vocabulary. Like once you say uh, important, you don't start repeating yourself important again and again. Because if you keep repeating yourself, player with the same word, examiner he comes to know that uh, what is the issue with him? There is, he doesn't have sufficient cap. For example, for the sixth band, can you see? Resource is sufficient, clear, to discuss topics at length. It's sufficient only. Sufficient, only sufficient. And what about the seventh band now? It's about flexibility, clear, and used to discuss a variety of topics. And the second one, we can okay, use maybe inappropriate, but meaning is clear for the sixth band. The, the, the vocab they use, clear, that is what? It is maybe inappropriate, it's not appropriate, but meaning is still clear, okay? And then generally able to paraphrase successfully, generally ever, clear? But he's quite weak in English then. And then if you move with a band, can you, can you see now? Wide, wide resource, readily and flexibly used to discuss all topics and convey precise meaning. Skillful use of less common, they use less common and idiomatic item despite occasional and occurrences and word choice and allocation. Effective use of, effective use, okay, of what? Paraphrase is required. The third one when we come up here, uh, the third area is about grammar, okay. Uh, for the seven band, a range of structures flexibly used. Error-free sentences are frequent. Candidate, they can produce error-free sentences. Number one. Number two, both simple and complex sentences are used effectively despite some errors. A few basic errors, clear? You can have that in your sound bag. But when you keep talking, you have to be, you, 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 you shouldn't make any type of mistakes in your grammar, like tenses. Suppose how to use simple present tense, simple past tense, simple future tense, present perfect tense. So you should have command on your tenses, number one. Second important thing are structures. Simple structures, compound sentences, complex sentences, compound complex sentences. Suppose let me give you an example. Uh, for example, if someone asks me a question, that, sir, what did you do on weekend or on Sunday? 
and how I can answer? Well, uh, last Sunday I went to Islamabad, I met my friends, I enjoyed a lot. How many sentences do I have now? Three. Three. Even though there is no grammar mistake, there is no grammatical, any type of grammatical mistake, but still all three sentences are simple sentences. Sentences are simple without using any type of linkers. So now what I can do now, the same thing I can say, last Sunday I went to Islamabad where I met my friends. I went to Islamabad where I met my friends and I enjoyed a lot. Now can you see? All three sample sentences, I combined all of them clear in one sentence. I put them all, these three, in one sentence. So you will try to use some characters and convert simple sentences into compound or complex. Okay, the last one, we come up here with the, your uh, pronunciation. The last part is about your pronunciation. Displays all the positive features of, okay, band six, uh, mm -hmm. wait, let me check out about the pronunciation part. Okay, okay, that's only for the six band. Uh, okay, let's go. Use a range of phonological features, but control is variable, clear. Chunking is generally appropriate, but rhythm may be affected by lack of stress. Look, pronunciation, what examiner is looking for, do you, can, are you able to pronounce a word correctly? What if a student, he doesn't know how to pronounce different words. In IELTS, we do not have marks for the accent, only we have marks for pronunciation. pronunciation. Yes. <laughs> what if you you speak and push the accent? There, it doesn't matter. Your accent doesn't matter. What really matters? Pronunciation. pronunciation. To pronounce words correctly. Number one. Number two. You should know proper stress on words. When you keep talking to someone, you should know where to bring stress which word needs to be stressed, clear, and this should be a type of intonation, clear, ups and downs, rhythm. So if you have all of them, like intonation, stress, clear, all the things are quite easy you people can get, high bend and eyes. So how many areas we discussed now? Four. There are four areas, clear. That's number one, your fluency. Number two, grammar. Number three, and pronunciation. All right. Let's come with you the first part now.